Hey dolls, welcome back to Lux Curves. Today we're going to talk about how to motivate yourself to eat healthier. So how to get out of the old habits of, you know, having more desserts than you know you probably should, binge eating, emotional eating, just not eating in a way that is going to sustain a healthy version of you and how to move into that healthier version of you, eating in a way that's going to honor your body and benefit you in the future. So first of all, I want to mention I am not um, a doctor. I'm not giving you any type of advice. I'm just sharing with you what's worked for me and you can do with this information as you will. If it serves you, great. If it doesn't, you can check it out the window and move on. So if you're struggling to lose weight right now, just know that there are possible biological reasons why that might be. And just for the sake of having a peace of mind, I recommend getting testing done. So get blood work, get different tests done, just so you know that it's not a biological piece. Because if you're someone who's been you know, eating healthy for many years, exercising regularly, but you just find that you're holding onto this weight and it's causing a lot of stress in your life, it's making you very resentful and very upset that you work so hard with no results, well maybe there's more to it than what meets the eye. So there's things called like Hashimoto's, hypothyroidism, and if you get testing done, then at least you could know, hey, maybe Maybe that's what you have and then you can treat that so it can now get be out of the way and you can actually figure out okay what is the root cause all right um, so having said that other than those biological reasons there are a million and one ways why we might be having the habits that we have so I think asking the question of why why do I do this why do I fall into old patterns why do I start a diet and then fail why 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 that's not the right question to ask because you might come up with a million and one conclusions and never be satisfied. If you're an emotional eater, that can stem as far back as some sort of trauma that you had in childhood that has triggered emotional eating and it's just become a habit ever since. So it can get really deep and you may be able to figure out the why with the help of a psychologist or psychiatrist, but you might not either. So uh, asking the question of why and waiting to find the answer before you get started on actually fixing it is really not gonna serve you. Okay, so what motivates human beings? Well, we are motivated by pain and by pleasure. Just like we train our dogs, you know, pain and pleasure, good boy, sit down, here's a treat. We're kind of the same way. <laughs> So when we think about it, if we are continuously falling into these habits of eating poorly, well, maybe it's because we haven't associated enough pain to those old habits and we haven't associated enough pleasure to the habits that are going to facilitate the new version of you. So this is what I recommend doing is on a paper, draw a line down the, oh, that is not a good line. <laughs> draw a straight line down the middle and on one side, you're gonna say old habits and new habits. And I'm using the word habits because sometimes we overcomplicate things. And I understand that because in our society today, there's a million and one diet trends, there's a million and one different coaches giving different advice, conflicting advice, and it can get very confusing and it can make it seem like, oh my God, losing weight is so hard. But if you think that way, you're really gonna struggle. And so you wanna see it for what it is. It's actually not that hard. If you believe that losing weight is simple, it will become simple. And it's just a matter of changing the habits. So right now, maybe you have habits, which you are, I'm sure, are very aware of that are unhealthy. So it's probably for a lot of us, I know I struggle with this, is emotional eating. So whenever I felt really stressed, I have this sense of um, empathy for myself, feeling sorry for myself. And so I would go towards the kitchen and find comfort in opening the fridge and finding something I'm certain about. I know that food is gonna make me feel better. I'm gonna taste something new. I just knew how it would make me feel and it would make me feel good. And so that's emotional eating. And I knew that it doesn't serve me, yet I kept on falling into that pattern because that is a habit that I have been used to and I found comfort in. You wanna basically make here a list of what this is causing in your life, the pain that it's causing in your life. So right now, if you are unhappy with the way that you look, you wanna write down all the things that you're unhappy about. 
So if you don't get to spend enough time playing with your kids on the beach because you hate wearing a bikini, well, that's causing pain in your life because that is now taking away from the experiences and the magic moments that you spend with your children. So you criticizing and judging your body is getting in the way of creating those magic moments with your children. Or it might be the fact that you know you just don't have the energy to do the things that you wanna do. So you wanna travel the world or you wanna have all these goals and do all these things, but you just feel really tired because of the way that you're eating, because of the eating habits, because of the extra weight on your body. And when your list gets big enough, you want to say, okay, great. Now let's make a list of the new habits. So now imagine yourself, the version of you that you've always dreamed of. All of the things that you would feel knowing, um, you know, being the healthier version of yourself. So having more energy to do the things that you wanna do in the day, not having to crash and go to bed early, or feeling the confidence to, you know, walk into a meeting and propose an idea, or, you know, being able to wear a bikini and not even second guess yourself or feeling more confident when you're intimate with your partner. Whatever it is, create a list of all the reasons that you need to change. And then what you do is you look at this list and it becomes very evident that if you really wanna live your life to the fullest, if you wanna honor your life, you know, you only get one life on this earth and if you wanna make the most out of it, then you need to change your ways to support your new habits so that you can be the best version of yourself. That's kind of what it comes down to, is really a lot of pain associated to the old ways and a lot of pleasure associated to the new ways because when you have enough pain of where you are right now, when you hit that threshold, then there are no more excuses. Everyone who's lost weight, it's because they've hit a threshold. So you hit that threshold of no return where you get so pissed off, so fed up, so frustrated with where things are going and the life that you're living that you have to change. Change becomes a must. And when anything is a must, you find a way to make it happen. So there are no more excuses. Whatever excuses you had, none of it matters anymore because all you know, you have your eyes set on the goal and that's all you know, that's all you're focused on. So what I would recommend doing is creating a, a name for the old you and a name for the new you. So what this does is it's a psychological thing where you create a character name of, let's say someone that you don't like, <laughs> someone in your past that you have negative emotions associated to. So let's say my old me is Rebecca. That's, I don't even know a Rebecca. So Rebecca is the old me. And the new me, I'm gonna name after someone that like maybe I admire, someone who has the healthy habits and is living the life that I wanna live. So let's just say it's J-Lo. J-Lo, I love J-Lo. This kind of, what it does is it also makes it um, a little bit more relaxed. Sometimes we, we make some, a situation so big and so intense and it becomes uh, very emotional, but when you associate a character name to it, you realize, hey, it's just, I'm just being Rebecca right now. Let me change to J-Lo. And so what happens is when you are in your old habits, recognize, hey, this is Rebecca. This is not me. The new me is J-Lo. I'm no longer Rebecca. I'm now J-Lo. And so you become this person. You become this character. You become this identity. So create a new identity for yourself. And you have to have empathy for yourself and realize that, you know, if you've been having these habits for the last 25, 30 years, it's not gonna happen overnight where you just make a change and all of a sudden you're the perfect J-Lo and you eat healthy and you have this like perfect life. That doesn't happen overnight because old habits are hard to break. So have some empathy on yourself and realize that yes, there will be times where you are triggered. You will be triggered by your emotions. You'll be triggered by your environment. You'll be triggered by you know, certain foods, your favorite foods, whatever it is. You'll be triggered to fall back into the old habits. But you have to realize that now you have this awareness and from today moving forward, because you have this awareness, you can catch yourself when you are in those old habits and you can realize, hey, you know what? Right now I'm Rebecca. This is the old me, I'm gonna change. And you just pick yourself right back up. So how do we make this a lot easier on you? Well, you have to make sure that you have a good environment. So who you surround yourself with is who you become. So I would recommend that if you have a goal to lose 20, 30, 40, 50 pounds, you make it public. 
So make sure all of your family members know so that they can support you, so that they aren't tempting you with different foods and you know, falling into old habits. The more people know, that know about this, the more accountable you'll be. Because oftentimes if you just tell yourself and you don't make it public, sometimes we say, oh, well, you know what? I always fail, I always give up, whatever. But now if you told all of your Facebook friends, all of a sudden you're like, oh, I gotta show up. I gotta do this. I gotta be my best. I gotta show them. <laughs> so use it as a tool. You know, it might be embarrassing for you. It might be really hard for you to make a post like that or to declare it to your family and friends, but push yourself to do this because realize that your old ways weren't working for you. So obviously you gotta try something new. If they aren't gonna support you on this journey, then you're gonna have to temporarily distance yourself from them and let them know why. Also make sure that you have a supportive environment. So that means emptying out your fridge, your cabinets. Don't put foods in there that are gonna tempt you. And don't make your kids an excuse. Oh, but my kids need the fruit roll up and the chips and no, like why would you be feeding your kids that junk food in the first place? You know, if you know that's not good for them, they're gonna fall into the same habits as you and suffer just like you did with your weight for all these years. Why are you feeding them that crap? Why put them through that, right? You are right now responsible for their eating habits and they're gonna develop their own habits based on the food that they're eating on a daily basis right now. Start fresh, tell them, hey, we're changing the way that we're doing things around here. We're gonna be living a healthier lifestyle, whether you like it or not, don't, they don't have to have the choice, it's mandatory. So you just have healthy foods in your fridge. Don't bring it in the house, because if you bring it in the house, you're gonna eat it when you fall back into Rebecca, when you get triggered, when you are emotional, when you're stressed, because those are the times of weakness. And when we're weak, all the rules go out the window. When we're weak, it's like, ah, screw it, whatever. You know, it doesn't matter anymore. And I also recommend making sure that you're consistently absorbing content that is gonna support the new you. So whatever the new you was, like whether it was, you know, doing a bikini comp competition or, or creating some sort of goal, watch content on YouTube that's gonna support that. So if that means that you're constantly reading books about health and nutrition, so be it. Listen to podcasts about health, watch documentaries, constantly absorb this information because then it's going to always be relevant. Because right now you might be super motivated, but three, four weeks from now, you might lose that motivation. But if it's something that you're constantly absorbing through the media, then at least it can last longer. I also recommend setting some goals for yourself. Like I mentioned, I, I set a bikini competition. That might sound a little crazy for you, but how about setting a goal for yourself that you right now would think, oh my God, I would never do that. So say for example, a photo shoot. What about a photo shoot on the beach in a bikini? And you don't have to share these photos with anyone. Of course, you don't have to post them publicly, but you still have to do the photo shoot. Or how about a lingerie photo shoot, a boudoir photo shoot? Something that you right now, just thinking about it makes you tense. But if you set a goal for yourself like that and pay for it in advance, so invest in the future you, invest in your JLo, then you now are committed. So if you're gonna spend $500 on a photo shoot 10 weeks from now, you better make sure every single day counts. Every day you gotta eat healthy so that you can be the best version of you for that photo shoot. So that's something, that's a tool that I use quite often. I will set photo shoots in the distance, five, six, 10 weeks from now to give me something to work towards. Because sometimes if I don't have that, then I do lack that motivation. I don't feel the need to make a change. I feel comfortable, right? So stretch yourself in that way. Something else that you could do is, you know, setting yourself a goal for a race doing your first marathon, running, you know, that's something that might, you might never do on a regular basis right now, but if you slowly, slowly, like today you go to the gym and you run for five minutes, tomorrow you run for six minutes, seven minutes, each day you set a goal, you get better just like 1% every day, eventually you can work your way up to a full hour of steady state running, and you can then, you know, run in a marathon, which you might never have dreamed of before and now you've accomplished a goal that makes you feel so proud of yourself. 
It shows you how far you've come and it makes you realize, hey, you know what? If I can achieve this, a goal that I never dreamed I would be able to achieve, I can achieve whatever I set my mind to. And it helps you build that confidence in yourself. So these are my tips for you. Just realize, you know, like it's a habit. It's, it's really a habit and you have to reach that threshold of no return. Hopefully it was helpful. Comment below if you have any tips for our viewers today. If you've lost weight, um, share what worked for you. You know, whether it was the psychology or different food tips or different uh, uh, types of um, exercises, whatever it was for you, share it with our viewers because we can definitely all help each other based on our experience in life. All right, dolls, have a great day. Bye-bye. Hey, thank you so much for watching. I really hope that you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe to my channel. And if you've already subscribed, there's this little gray bell symbol. If you hit that, then you're gonna get notified when I release new videos. And if you wanna keep watching, I've handpicked these two videos for you to watch right here.